turn this camera off so I don't kill my bandwidth. Okay. Um, is that a message there? Okay, nothing there. Cool. So, not going to bring in a uh, cool cucumber yet. We're going to bring in the OSnap file, OSnap.ai, and we want to remember to bring it in as composition retained layer sizes. All right. And then once we've done that, we can say open. It'll make a layers folder for us and it'll make a composition for us. All right. The next thing, once you have done that, is you can import the osnap.mov file. All right. We're going to be using that as reference. So that's the osnap.mov. And um, what we can do for that is you can um, just bring that in as footage. We don't need to worry about anything there. So I'm going to just say open. And it will make another composition for us. It'll be called osnap2, which is fine. Um, it's going to open it up for us automatically, and that's going to be our video reference for today. Okay. There we go. Got some updates there on the stream. Okay, cool. Um, so just hit me up with a yes in chat once you have opened up After Effects and we've gone inside of the OSnap file. All right, so we should just be looking at all of these layers over here. Yes, fantastic, Ivana, great. All good, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, okay. Good, good, good. All right, Angela, you good? Yes, fantastic. Okay, dope. Sorry, I didn't see your message there above Alistair's. Dope. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just quickly lock this uh, final layer over here, layer 12. Um, and what we're going to be doing from sort of this point onwards um, is I'm going to start calling out the layer number as well as the name. All right, so layer one, layer two, layer three, etc. It's going to make the parenting a lot easier as we go. All right, but before we get to that, who can remember what our very first step is? Once we've imported our files into After Effects, what should we do next? Color code, there we go. Okay. Uh, Alistair, you can use your mic if you want. You don't have to worry about that. Um, okay, so I'm going to grab layers 1, 3, 5, and 7. All right, so that's all the layers that end with the word tip. And I'm just going to make those any random color here. So let's make them yellow. Uh, I'm then going to grab layers 2, 4, 6, 8, and 9. So that's all the layers that end in base, as well as your hand layer. Let's make those like red. And then our forearm and upper arm, we could either leave as they are, or we can just adjust them. Uh, let me make these like cyan, so you can actually see my, my points there. OK, once we have color coded, what do we do next? There are five major steps that we should follow. Color coding is step one. Uh, you move the anchor points. Yes, thank you, Angela and um, Ivana, both both correct. So we are going to move our anchor points now. Just make sure that everything is in the correct position. All right, so I'm going to grab Y for my uh, pan behind tool, and then I'm going to start moving these to where their joints would be. Okay, who can tell me what the next step is? What should we do once our anchor points are all in the correct position? We test the movement. Okay. Yes, we test. All right. Um, so we'll do that. So once all your anchor points are in the correct position, we want to test and make sure that they are bending from the correct point. We're going to do that to make sure that we don't have any nasty surprises later down the line. Okay. All 
All right, so once I've moved my anchor points for everything, I can just select them and hit W for my rotation tool. It can be found up here in the top left, or I can select all my layers and hit R for rotation. And I can just slide that around and make sure that everything's bending correctly. Okay, and once I'm sure about that, then I'm good. What is my final step? Oh, sorry, my second last step, there are two steps. Anyone? Anyone want to take a guess? I've been nominating people in the other classes, so you can always do that mm. as well. Yeah, you parent them. Parent them, exactly. All right, so we parent them, and then the final step is to check them one more time. All right, so I'm going to start calling out the numbers. Let's get you guys used to this process. So layer one, that's our pinky tip parented to layer two, pinky base. Layer three will be parented to layer four. Layer five will be parented to layer six and layer seven will be parented to layer eight. All right, so that's all the layers that um, start with um, tip and then parented to their corresponding bases. All right, then I'm going to grab layers two, four, six, and eight. And I'm going to parent them to layer nine. All right, and uh, that is then going to allow my hand to drive all my fingers. Layer 9, parented to layer 10, layer 10, parented to layer 11. Okay. Um, oh wait. So, just to call that out again, layer 1 is parented to layer 2, layer 2 is parented to layer 9, layer 3 is parented to layer 4, layer 4 parented to layer 9, layer 5 to layer 6, layer 6 to 9, layer 7 to 8, 8 to 9, 9 to 10, and 10 to 11. Okay, and then I'm going to check them again, and I'm going to make sure that everything is rotating correctly. I don't want any sort of issues where, like, if I try and move my thumb and then my, my shoulder moves with it, that's going to be a little awkward. Imagine if that was the case, and your arm just, like, snapped out of the... Uh, yeah, it's not even worth thinking about. Okay, so once we have tested these, we are now ready to begin animating. Okay. Have we all imported the OSNAP MOV file, the video file? Is anyone who hasn't done that yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So we're going to be using this as an exercise in referring back to our um, referring back to our reference. All right. So I've noticed in the past that like a lot of people don't want to look at reference because they feel like they're copying, but that is not the case. Right. The easiest way to learn is by copying people who are doing great work. Um, so mimicking this one exactly to the T is essentially going to be your exercise for today and homework for tomorrow if you don't finish. OK, so let's take a look at this breakdown. You can slide through yours with me just in case the stream sort of doesn't show you much information. Um, but we're going to focus entirely on the upper arm first. All right. So we're going to break this down to layers. We're going to animate the upper arm. Then we'll animate the forearm. Then we'll animate the hand and the fingers. Okay, so let's do a full breakdown. We can see as we go through, my upper arm moves ever so slightly upwards, right? So that's the anticipation for the snap. My arm then moves down. At the same time, my forearm, which has also moved inwards on that anticipation, snaps down. All right. My fingers, we can see curl up. Okay, so I'm just starting at the beginning, constantly going back and seeing what else is changing. Okay, so my fingers are overlapping. They all come into position as my arm is about to move downwards. We can see that the pinky overlaps the hand. My middle finger and my thumb is what is producing the snap illusion. And my index finger is actually not moving at all. So we're not going to be animating that layer. Cool. Moves down. We can see that my fingers don't all move at once. First my pinky moves, then my index finger, then my thumb. All right, the rotation of the hand helps to sell that illusion there. We then come back to slightly past our resting point, right? So we've got that overlap going on there, that overshoot. The follow through then brings our arm down to rest finally. Okay, so constantly throughout my animation, even if I think I know what I'm doing, I'm always going to go back and check to make sure that I haven't forgotten anything along the way. All right, so let's begin. <clears throat> I'm going to start calling out I know things get very confusing. So I'm going to start calling out the keyframes by sitting on top of second one. So that way our first keyframe will be here. We'll move our keyframes back down the line a bit later on. 
Okay, so I'm going to be working with my upper arm first, which means I can select layers 1 to 10, and I can turn those eyes off. All right, so that we hide those layers. And I'm going to hit R for layer 11, and I'm going to type in negative 45 degrees. All right, that gets us into our initial starting pose. Okay, we're all good. I'm going to then create a keyframe for that by clicking on my little stopwatch here. And there we go. We now have our very first frame. Okay, second number two. We are going to have, as I've said, a very small, subtle movement here. So I'm going to make this about negative 43, right? So first keyframe reads negative 45. Second keyframe reads negative 43. Okay. If you find yourself struggling to type, or if you don't want to type, but you're struggling to use the slider, if you hold down com control or command um, while messing with this, is it that or is it option? No, it's command. Yeah, control or command is going to change like the individual decimal points, which might make it a little bit easier to help you do that rotation. That's just a little thing there for you if you'd like. Okay. Now, second number three, third keyframe. What we're going to do here is we're going to bring the arm down. All right, so I'm going, to, I'm going to bring that into about negative, let's make that like 55 degrees. Let's see how big that movement is. That's actually a bit too big for my upper arm. Upper arm's got a nice smooth, um, sort of very minimal movement going on. So if my starting value was negative 45, let's just make this negative 50. All right. Cool. So by minimizing the amount of movement that's happening in the upper arm, we're going to be able to emphasize the movement that's happening on the fingers because they're going to be the thing moving the most. Okay. So <clears throat> here we go. My arm comes down. It then needs to go back up again. So beyond its resting point and then come to rest. Okay. So this is where we can be a little bit lazy. I'm going to copy my second keyframe that's sitting on second number two, and I'm just going to paste it on second four. Right, that's already my arm having overshot its um, resting point. Okay, and then second number five, I'm just going to copy and paste my very first keyframe. Okay, and there we go. There, my arm has come back to rest. So, pull a little sneaky one, as Alistair said. We can always refine those a bit later, but just a nice way to minimize the time we spend on the blocking out. Okay, once we've done that, we can take a look at my forearm. All right, so I'm going to hit rotation for that, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> create a keyframe for layer 10's rotation. Okay, going back to my reference, upper arm moves in slightly as we get ready for that anticipation, snaps out, and then does the exact same thing as the upper arm. Right? It overshoots its resting point, and then it comes to rest. So let's take a look at this. This is going to move up ever so slightly. So if it was reading 0 degrees, let's make it read 5 degrees. So we're going to have a positive value there. Okay, then as our arm comes down, let's give this a negative 15 degrees bend. That's going to exaggerate that arm a little bit more. So that's going to look good. Okay, and then on second number four, I'm again just going to copy my second keyframe, paste it there. And then on second number five, I'm going to copy paste my very first keyframe. All right, is uh, everyone good so far? I'm not leaving anyone behind. We all have five keyframes down for both layer 10 and 11. Yep, fantastic. I like dealing with this class because you guys are so few. Um, it's very easy to keep you up. No, all good. So it's all good if you don't have a mic today. Um, we can listen to your dulcet tones next week. Hopefully everyone will get to the point where we're comfortable with that. Okay, so next up we're going to do the hand. All right, now the hand we can see if we take a look here, it's easy to sort of um, confuse if I take a look between frames five and six, essentially, right? We see that rotation occurring in the fingers. Now, those aren't the finger bases rotating. That's the hand pulling those bases with, all right? And the hand is also rotating outwards over here which is going to allow my fingers to sort of move even further away from the body. Then it also comes back up and comes to rest again. And we sort of sell that illusion with the fingers. And it's only here at the end that we can see our index finger is animated. 
Okay, so let us do this. So I will create a rotation keyframe for my hand. That's layer nine. I'll move on to second number two, and I'm going to rotate that by, uh, let's make it by 30 degrees. I think that should be okay. Moving over to second number three, I'm going to, rotate this, to rotate this to negative 30. All right, I'm kind of just making these numbers up as I go. The initial blocking is all I need. Okay, then second number four, I am going to do again, copy and paste my first and second keyframes. Now these ones I'm gonna to need to refine, but I can do that once I have my fingers. All right, so I do believe the hand goes a little too far here, but once we can see our fingers, we'll have a better idea of what that's looking like. All right, so now I can turn on my finger layers and just to make sure I don't accidentally mess around with my hand, forearm and upper arm, I'm going to lock those layers in place. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at our fingers then. All right, so we can see that, um, as I've said, my index finger doesn't move. My middle finger and thumb come to uh, sort of touch and then the pinky overlaps with the hand entirely. All right, so we're gonna start blocking the sort of uh, movement of our fingers out as well. So I'm gonna hit R for rotation and we can start creating some keyframes here. Okay, boom. That's keyframes for all, uh, that's uh, from layers one to eight. Okay, second number two, this is where my arm is getting ready to move down. So this is where my fingers should be in the correct position. Index finger, we don't work with. Uh, so I'm actually going to delete its keyframe here. Uh, index base also don't need. So that's layers five and six, I don't need any keyframes. I'm gonna collapse and lock them. So I can't accidentally work with them at the moment. Okay, uh, middle finger base. Let's do this rotation first. So that's layer four. I'm going to bring it into 60 degrees. I kind of know these values now from the previous classes. So layer four, that second keyframe reads 60 degrees. All right, middle tip, 60 degrees as well. All right, um, pinky base. So uh, sorry, so that's layer three reading 60 degrees as well. Uh, layer two. Let's bring that down. Let's bring that down to 80 degrees. And then our pinky tip, we can bring in to about 70 degrees. Um, and I can push my pinky further, right? But if I push it a bit further, it kind of feels as though my fingers are a bit broken. So I'm kind of just gonna leave it here. Um, and this is mainly because like you can't move your pinky without moving your ring finger, right? It's, it's, you can't pull it towards your palm without pulling your ring finger with it. So we don't want that pinky finger to be too far past that middle finger because it's closer to us. Um, it's gonna look as though it's slightly higher up. Okay, pinky tip we have done. So now we can go down to layer seven and eight, which is our thumbs. Okay, so I'm gonna do layer eight first and I'm gonna bring my thumb into negative 40 degrees, all right? And then my thumb tip, I'll bring in like so, and let's make that negative, let's make that negative 30 as well. Okay, so I'll read those back out to you again. Um, layer one, for, okay, these are all the second keyframes, all right? So layer one rotation reads 70 degrees, layer two reads 84. Right, I'm just going to make that 85 because 84 is going to bug me. Um, layer three, that's 60 degrees. Layer four is 60 degrees. Uh, layer seven is negative 30. Layer eight is negative 40. And then we've already done the hand and arms. Okay, cool. So then our fingers start moving out. And this is where we're going to start stepping out our keyframes. All right. So if I just make a new composition quickly and give you an idea of what stepping means. Um, so typically when I say stepping, what I'm saying is that we're either going to be overlapping our assets. Okay. So our layers are either going to do something like this where one sort of begins just before another one is going to end. Or alternatively, it's going to mean that my keyframes are going to begin on one layer as soon as it ends on a different layer. Okay, so I'm going to show you now and it should make a little bit more sense. 
All right. So on our snap here, pinky moves first, middle finger moves second, thumb moves third. All right. So let's do those movements. We can start with the pinky, right? So I'm going to block it out over here, and then we're going to adjust the keyframes as we go. So I'm going to start off with pinky rotation. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to bring that back to zero degrees, and I'm going to do the same for my pinky tip. All right. Cool. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to grab my middle tip and my middle base, and I'm going to make both of those zero degrees as well. Okay. I'll do the same for my thumb. So that's zero degrees for the um, for layer seven and zero degrees for layer eight. Okay. So what I've done now is I've blocked out their end position. And now I'm going to start staggering out those keyframes. So I'm just going to quickly collapse these layers at the bottom so we don't get confused. Um, and I'm actually going to make everything I'm not working on shy at the moment so that we have a bit of a clearer idea. Okay. So my pinky I'm happy with, right? The pinky moves um, as it sort of should. As my arm moves down, my pinky comes out. All right. Then, so that's layers one and two. Those are, those are done. I'm happy with those for now. So I'm going to lock them. I don't accidentally break them. All right. Moving on to my middle tip and my middle base. Okay. These don't begin at the exact same time as the, the pinky, right? There's a bit of a delay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start counting out a couple of frames and I'm going to shift and adjust my keyframes accordingly. Okay. So I'm going to count myself out by about three frames. Okay. So I can do that by clicking and dragging this little blue handle over here. Uh, one, two, three. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the keyframe for layer three, and I'm going to copy and paste it here. And then I'm going to grab for layer four, and I'm going to copy and paste it here. Okay. I'm going to do the same for layer seven and eight as well. Okay, so I've duplicated those keyframes. And uh, hopefully you guys remember the toggle hold keyframe function from last term. All right, I see the stream has frozen a little bit. But what I have done is I have selected all the keyframes that are sitting under the second layer or the second second, right? So second number two, there we go. You can see I have selected all the keyframes for layers three, four, seven, and eight. And I'm going to right click on those and I'm going to set toggle hold keyframe. All right. Can anyone tell me why I've done this, right? Why, why am I setting toggle hold here rather than just shifting all of my initial keyframes to the right? You know, I'm going to take like a wild guess. No, okay, that's fine. So the reason why I'm doing this is because for my initial movement, all my fingers move at once, okay? But because there's a staggering in my movement, because my pinky starts moving first and then my middle finger, I don't want them to then all move at the same time, right? So what I can do is having duplicated those keyframes and knowing that I've moved them out by three frames to begin with, I can go to the end of layer three and four, and I'm gonna shift those keyframes to the right by three, okay? And that's going to allow us to create that stagger or that overlap, okay? Then my thumb moves, right? So <clears throat> what I can do then is I'm just going to use my um, layers three and four as guides. I'm going to select the keyframes that I've got here for layer seven and eight. So I'm not going to select the toggle hold frames. I'm only going to select the diamond frames. And I'm going to move myself out by three as well, three keyframes. Okay, and here at least we've started getting the idea that they're not all moving at once. Okay, and then once I apply easing, I might find that I need to shift them either further apart or closer together. But for now, we've got the blocking idea down that they don't all move at once. They come back to rest, and then we can add a sway to them as we go. But we'll do that once we've applied easing, so we get a better idea of how many frames to, to do on that. All right, we could block it out, but I think for now we'll leave it as it is. Okay, we all good so far. Our, our keyframes kind of uh, looking the same here. I need to shift this one halfway through as well. 
Okay. Boom, and then my thumb opens up. Okay, cool. All right. And this staggering is going to allow us to create that illusion. Okay. So I'm now going to unshy everything. Okay. And I'm going to hit Command or Control A. Just make sure I've unlocked everything. And I'm going to hit U for uniform or R for rotation. And it will bring up those values for me. Okay. Again, layers five and six we're not using yet. So we can close and lock those. But the rest of them, we are going to now apply easing. Okay. So I'm going to click and drag and select all of my keyframes. And then holding down shift, I'm going to click and drag over my four toggle hold keyframes. I don't want to apply easing to those, right? It kind of defeats the purpose. So once I have deselected the toggle hold frames, I'm going to then apply easing to all of my other diamond frames. And if we play this back, it's already starting to look pretty dope, right? Like we're getting there. We've started injecting some life into this arm, all right? Now it's time to start putting these keyframes in the correct position, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all my keyframes, absolutely all of them, and I'm going to move them up so that my animation starts at zero, zero seconds, okay? So we've got those in the correct place. Then we can take a look. We've got 25 frames for this very small motion to occur. We don't need that many, right? It is a slow motion. It's not that slow. So I'm going to count out 10 frames. Let's make it 12. And I am then going to deselect all of my very first keyframes and just move all the second ones closer together. OK. So when I start doing this sort of um, adjustments here, I tend to look at these keyframes as columns, all right? Because these columns relate to one another. So the very first column of keyframes are all sitting at 0, 0 seconds. The next set is sitting 12 frames away from that. Okay. And then what I can do is I can start just grabbing where my fingers end here. So I'm going to ignore um, the third keyframe for layer three and four, as well as for seven and eight. Okay. I'm kind of happy with how they are moving at the moment. What I'm going to do then is I'm just going to grab the rest of my keyframes. So that's all. Uh, that's the fourth keyframe for layers one, two, three, and four, as well as seven and eight, and then all the keyframes over here for the last. I'm going to bring those closer together. Okay. And that snapping motion is quite a quick one. So we don't want it to occur too slowly. So I'm going to just quickly move myself out. So I'm going to use my very first finger motion, which is my pinky motion. I'm just going to move out and I'm going to give myself eight frames to work with. Okay. So I now have that snap motion going on. And then the very last thing that I need to do is I just need to adjust the motion of this arm coming back towards rest. Okay. Now, the reason why we can have a fairly large gap between the snap down and coming back up again is because we need to um, obviously transfer that energy. We need to redirect it instead of going down to come back up again, right? Which is where we get that sort of easing in. And then again, I'm just going to give myself 12 frames over here to end with. Okay. So now I've got a basic movement. Are we all kind of looking at the same thing? Doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same as mine. But as long as we've got some general blocking out for this, we are good so far. Okay, and we're actually really ahead of schedule, so this is great. Okay, is anyone who's lost, anyone that needs help? It's perfectly okay if that is the case. All good, fantastic. Okay, so let's apply some easing to these. Right, so or some interpolation rather. Okay, so now we've got a lot of sort of assets that are moving at the exact same time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select all the keyframes for layers one and two. So that's our pinky tip and pinky base, and I'm going to go into my graph editor. Okay, so because these two are working together, we don't need to worry about um, <clears throat> doing them each individually. Okay, uh, before we continue, what I want us all to do quickly is just go over to second three, right? If I just go back to my keyframes, you'll see that none of my animations sort of moves past this. I could probably end it a little bit sooner. 
um, and hit N for NATO, right? It's going to sort of trim your workspace shorter. That's this gray bar here, hopefully you remember. And if I right click on that and say trim comp to work area, so that's the third option. It's going to give me a lot more real estate on screen. So once I've selected that option, when the screen catches up, it's going to show you that my entire timeline is now only two and a bit seconds long. So I've got a lot more sort of, got like a more zoomed in view of my keyframes without actually having zoomed in. Okay, cool. So again, grabbing the keyframes for layers one and two, all of those, I'm going to dive into the graph editor and we can take a look at this. All right. So the reason why we've got this sort of sine curve over here is because we're rotating into the positive and then negative values. All right. So that's perfectly fine. I'm just going to select these middle keyframes here and we're going to take a look. Now, I want my finger to overcome inertia, right? So what I'm going to do is grab these very first keyframes and I'm just going to drag that little yellow handle out a little bit like that. Okay. I don't want the peak to be too sharp, right? It's not snapping into place. We're not breaking any bones, but we are allowing it a little bit of time to occur and then sort of speeding up from there. Okay. Then I'm going to quickly push that in this direction, right? So I've grabbed the middle keys over here. I'm going to maybe move these a little to the right. And then on the other side, this handle here to the right, I'm going to move that to the left. All right. And then my very last keyframe here, I can make that a bit sharper there and I can play it back and check. Okay, so the reason why I'm now doing this and I can solo these two layers, remember we've got the little solo button, which is directly to the left of the lock button in our timeline. And I'm going to solo these and just make sure that I'm happy with what I'm seeing. Um, let me just, sorry, grab those keyframes again. Play that back. Okay, so now we've got that nice snap going on. All right. And the reason why we've now placed our, our um, graph in this particular decision is we remember that the higher the peaks and it works for the same in the negative value, the higher the peaks, the faster our motion. So I'm continuing that fast motion over here and then coming to rest again at the end. Okay. And if I'm not happy with that, I can always adjust this later, go through, make sure we're happy with it at any given time. Okay, cool. Next, I'm going to grab the keyframes for layers three and four. All right, I'll grab all of them, including the toggle hold keyframes, dive into my graph editor. Okay, so this is what it should look like. This is the keyframe that has been locked in place. So I'm just going to quickly grab that, and you'll see that because I have two layers selected, there are two. I'm just going to grab those little yellow squares, and I'm going to bring them down to the horizon line. Okay, and essentially, this is going to be the exact same movement. Uh, well, almost, okay. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to actually pull this out. So it looks like a bit of a speed bump. Okay, I'm just going to unsolo those two layers there so we can see our middle finger. Um, and that's going to allow us to overcome inertia, but then to also come to rest before it begins moving again. Okay, so I'm just going to shift these up so that the point is kind of in the middle there. Okay, then for here, my motion needs to occur fairly quickly. All right, so I'm kind of happy with these handles are. I might bring them slightly to the left. And then I can push this uh, to the left as well. All right, and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so that's allowing us to get that snap, right? Faster motion and then coming to rest at the end. And we're going to do the same for the thumb. All right, so that's layers seven and eight. Am I leaving anyone behind? Is the stream breaking? Is there anyone who's lost? I see that the stream has frozen at the moment. Um, but all I've done is select all the keyframes for layers seven and eight, as you can see now currently on the screen. Okay, diving into the graph editor, we're going to see pretty much the exact same thing, right? So here are the two keyframes that have been toggle held. So I'm going to grab each of these and bring them down to that horizon line or up rather to that horizon line there. And I'm going to shift that out towards the center so that it uh, takes a bit of time to speed up and takes a bit of time to slow down. 
All right. The final motion, the snap there needs to be very hard, right? That's where our sound is coming from, uh, as well as from the middle finger. So we might need to adjust that. So I'm going to make this a fairly steep peak over here. Um, I'm actually not happy with the way that that's moving. So I might need to um, just bring the keyframes closer together slightly. It's taking a bit long to happen there. Um, so let's give that one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's give it six frames to work with. See what that looks like. Okay. And then I'm just going to go back to my middle keyframes here. Um, and I'm going to adjust these so that the snap occurs a bit faster. There we go. Okay, so now we have started getting that nice motion going on in the fingers. All right. Then let's do the hand. Let's start working on the arms. All right. So we can do the hand. We'll do that separately. Let's take a look at it here. Right. So here we want it to build up. All right. So I'm going to have it do something like this so that it speeds up and slows down. Okay. Then we have that snap as the fingers go. Okay. So what I want to do is typically I'll try and have these lines follow along from each other. So I just want to see what that looks like. Um, it might be taking a little bit long. So we'll do that and that there. Okay. So by trying to follow those lines, we're just sort of smoothing out our motion. There's not going to be any jagged jumps there. All right. So there we go. That's looking fine. I'm going to move this out slightly to the left and my right hand handle slightly to the right. And that's just going to allow me to ease back into my positions um, a little bit smoother. Okay. We all doing okay so far? Seems to be the case. All right. And then finally, I am going to animate my keyframes for layers 10 and 11. Okay. And diving into the graph editor, it's okay that they're not completely overlapping, right? The reason for that is um, because the upper arm, which is this value here, is not moving as much as the forearm, which is this uh, top value here. All right, but they're going to be moving the exact same way. So again, I'm going to have them start off a little slower, speed up and then come to rest. All right, that snap is going to go down. So I'm going to try and follow this along. Let's do something like that. And we can have a bit of a steep curve here. All right, and that snap is going to allow me to sell the idea. I might push it a little bit more towards the center like that. Um, having that peak gives me the illusion of that, that nice fast snap, but it might occur a little too quickly here. So it really is just refinement. I'm sure I'm boring you guys with this, but it's just going back, refining, going back, refining. Keep in mind that whenever our arm changes direction, it needs a bit of time to speed up and slow down because again, it's transferring that force. Right? It needs a little bit of time to allow it to sort of change the direction of that force. Okay. Now we can go back and we can refine our motion. All right. So I said at the start that the hand appears to move like a little too much when it rotates beyond its point of rest. So now I can go back. I have selected the fourth keyframe for my hand, the one that reads 30 degrees rotation. I'm just going to change that to like 15 degrees rotation. It looks a little bit nicer. Okay. So we definitely still need some refinement here, but for now it is moving as I would like it to. The thumb I'm going to have sort of start a little sooner. Um, just to give that idea. And then what we would do next is um, we can then just animate the fingers rotating outwards. We don't need to do that right now. I'll leave that for you guys to do as your homework. Um, but this is definitely a lot further than any of the other classes I've gotten. Okay. Cool. Are there any questions with regards to this?
right? So it's exactly the same process as last week. Only difference is we actually have a hand layer. Um, and yeah, you should feel pretty dope. You've just injected life into an arm. It lives. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Are you guys good? Are we are we ready to sort of move on to do it? We're going to end very early today, which is which is great. Um, but yeah, let's see. Do it time. Damn straight. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to what you guys can do for me rather is just hit Command N or Control N to make a new composition here. Um, actually, no, that's not even necessary. Sorry. What I want you to do. Yeah, I'm not going to be using this, so I'm, I'm actually just going to delete all my information here. But what I want you to do is save your current file, save this as the OSNAP uh, FK, right? Just so that you can go back to it later and finish it for homework. Then you can re, like, then you can um, you can close After Effects or open After Effects again, and you're going to re-import the ARM snap, just so we're not breaking anything that you're working with currently. Okay. I don't need to do that because I'm going to be doing this again for the rest of the day. So I can just delete all those keyframes. And we're going to be using this like so. Okay. So I essentially want us to start from scratch. All right. So when we import, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Our parenting will not have been done yet. We're going to move the anchor points into the correct positions and we're going to test that their rotation works. All right, we don't do the um, the parenting just yet because the parenting works differently with Duik. I'll show you guys that in a moment. All right, are we all good? Are we all ready to, to begin with Duik? Seems like it. Uno momento. All right, so we'll give a little bit of time still, that's fine. Uh, in the meantime, you guys can do that for me. Move your anchor points into the correct position, label your jazz with different colors, um, and make sure that everything is rotating correctly. Hmm. Okay, cool. Um, Alistair, are we good? Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so what I want you guys to do now inside of Dirk is we're going to go and click on Window at the very top. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you will find Dirk Basel point two. All right. Once you click on that, um, you'll be greeted with a window box like this. All right, yours might be white. It's kind of like a landing page that says hello. That's fine. Um, you can get rid of that by clicking on any one of these little icons up here. Or if you have this drop down, um, these are here for us to use as well. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hover next to the name Basil, right? Do it Basil here. And um, you're going to get a little white rectangle in the bottom right of your mouse. That means that we can dock this window anywhere we like. So I'm going to click and drag this. And wherever it is highlighted blue, that's where I could dock this. So I'm going to just dump it here um, to the left of my viewing window. And I can just close that in a little bit. Let me get rid of all this information. So I've got a bit more space to work with. I don't need any of that. There we go. OK. Have we all opened up Duik? Are we all ready to begin? This is really cool. All right. So. Duik has been kind enough as they've been updating their user interface to essentially set this out um, in the method that we would sort of animate a character. So you'll see the very top says rigging, all right? That's where we generate our bones. Next up is automation. That's where we can include some automated animation. Um, and then the actual animation itself that we can then go and change, et cetera. Okay, so we can all click on rigging for me. Yeah, you can either click on this little Meccano arm up here in the top right, or if you had that like landing page, um, this one over here, this is what we want to have read, this Meccano arm. All right, so just to give you a breakdown here in rigging, we've got all these different structures that we can ask Duik to automatically generate a skeleton for. All right, 
We then, in our next step, we have this little button here. This is our links and constraints. All right, this is what we use to tell Duik after we've made the rig. Cool, now lock it in place and let's make it move. Okay, we then have some controllers. Um, you'll see why we have this option once we actually generate some bones, but these are just here to for us to like customize our controllers. So you'll see, for example, my mouse is hovering over an eyebrow. So if I was animating a face and I wanted to use an eyebrow icon, I could do that. Okay. So it all just depends with the icons on how much prep work you want to put in. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dive back into the create structures tab here. And we're going to click on the second option, which is uh, arm and then in brackets or front leg. Okay. Once we click on that, Duke's going to do its magic. Don't worry if it takes a long time. Um, it's just After Effects taking everything into account. And once you've done that, you should have something that looks like this. Yeah? Anyone who doesn't have what we see on screen at the moment doesn't look like it. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's carry on then. So let's take a look at now what has happened inside of our timeline before we move anywhere else. Okay, so a few layers have been made for us here in our timeline, layers one to four, all right? And they have been labeled for us. They currently read S arm tip, S hand, S forearm, and S arm, S arm, all right? That S refers to structure, and you'll see they've been kind enough to label those layers for us as structures here inside of our layer uh, timeline, all right? Taking a look immediately to the left, um, of the, the layer name, you guys will see these little blue grid icons. These are guide layers, all right? So guide layers just mean that they are there for us animators to look at. When we render our video, these layers will not be visible, okay? So we don't have to worry about accidentally not hiding um, like some of the bones and then them showing up in the render. They will automatically hide for us, okay? You'll also notice that they have all been parented for us correctly, which is great. So arm tip, layer one is parented to layer two, that's the hand. Hand is parented to layer three, that's the forearm, and forearm is parented to layer four, that is our upper arm. Okay. And now the next thing that we can do is we can start aligning these assets on top of what we've got to animate. All right. So I'm just going to quickly select all of my Illustrator files or my layers rather and lock those so I can't accidentally interact with the arm and break my keyframes when I'm doing this. And I'm going to start overlapping here. Now, we always want to start with the layer that is not parented to anything else. Okay, because if I were now, for example, to just go and put my hand where I wanted it and then I wanted to move my elbow, you'll see it's going to push my hand away. All right, so the parenting still works as it normally does. Um, the assets that are parented to each other will be pushed and moved by its parent. Okay. I'll line these up a little bit better. It's a lot easier to measure twice and cut once. I'm sure you guys have heard. So get it right the first time around. You won't have to adjust it later. And then our very last layer, this little indicator over here, this is the marker that tells Duik and After Effects that this is where our skeleton ends. And I'm going to place it here at the palm, all right? When we are animating this arm using this Duik method, we're still going to be animating the fingers using the forward kinematic rotation method, okay? It's a lot simpler than it is to generate a skeleton for the fingers as well. All right. Are we all overlapped correctly? I believe we should be. Ivana, I can't take your picture seriously. This duck staring at me is... It's, uh, it's terrifying. <laughs> I think we should change it. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. It's perfectly fine. Um, okay, cool. So now that we have placed these in the correct position, I'm going to select my skeleton. All right, I'm not selecting my Illustrator file. I am just selecting these structure layers here. Okay, and I'm going to move into my second tab under rigging. If you hover over it, it will read links and constraints. Once I click on that, we'll be looking at a couple of options here. All right. The very first option is what we're going to click on, auto rig and IK. Again, once I've clicked on it, Duik is going to do its magic. And we'll see that a few things have changed on screen. All right. 
If you've done it correctly, you will have this red hand over here and you'll have this line from that hand to the shoulder, right? So if you deselect it, it looks like a dotted red line. If you have it selected, you'll have like a solid line or whatever label. It should be green. It'll automatically create a controller layer for you. Okay. Now, in our timeline, you'll see that it has now made a, another keyframe for me, or sorry, a, another layer for me, and that is called C hand. All right. Now, C stands for controller, and that means that wherever I move my red hand, my bones, sorry, um, my bones and my skeletons are going to follow. Okay. That's pretty dope. So I'm going to undo that, get it back into the correct position. Now we're going to start parenting everything. Okay, so is there anyone who does not have the red hand and the red line? No one. Fantastic. Okay, so now we're going to start doing the parenting. And this is where me calling out the numbers is going to make a lot more sense. Okay, so layer six, that's pinky tip. That is going to be exactly the same throughout for the fingers. So pinky tip to pinky base, layer six parented to layer seven, layer eight parented to layer nine, layer 10 parented to layer 11, and layer 12 parented to layer 13. So that's all the tips now parented to their bases. Okay. I am then going to select all the base layers. So that is layer seven, eight, uh, seven, nine, 11, and 13. And I'm going to parent those to my hand layer, layer 14. All right, so you'll see, we actually now have three layers in our timeline that end in the word hand. All right, we've got the controller hand, we have the structure hand, um, and then we have our illustrator file hand. So this is where me calling out the numbers is going to help. All right. Now, what we want to do is we want to parent the hand, forearm, and upper arm to the actual skeleton. Okay, so I'm going to select my hand, that's layer 14, and I'm going to parent that to layer 3. Okay. Layer 15, I'm going to parent to layer 4, that's S forearm. And layer 16, that's upper arm, I'm going to parent to structure arm, so that's layer 5. Okay, so one more time, just to give you a shot, um, all your fingers should be done, that's fairly self-explanatory. Um, all the bases will be parented to the hand, which is layer 14. Layer 14 parented to layer 3, layer 15 parented to layer 4 and layer 16 parented to layer five. And now, if you grab that controller and move it around, your arm's gonna move with it. How dope is that? Pretty fucking cool, I'm sure you'll agree. Okay. Yes, exactly, someone be excited, let's get ready for it. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we can take a look at here. We've got a couple of options that we can adjust when it comes to our um, controller. And that will be our options that you can find in your effect controls panel over here. And you'll see we've got three main headings. We've got controller, arm, and IK hand. All right, so taking a look at the controller first, if I hit the little drop down next to the word icon, the icon refers to this actual red hand itself, all right? So if I uh, want to change the color, for example, I can definitely do that. It's a live update for me, all right? Uh, if I wanted to make it white, for example, that might help it stand out. Um, so I can change that color. Okay, let's keep it nice and bright red. I can change its position, all right? So if I use these little sliders, I can actually move it to sit wherever I want it to. So if I'm not happy with where the hand is sitting, I can quickly just move it. Um, you know, do that quickly. I can quickly just move it to sort of like, let's say hover over the hand. It's still going to work. Okay, which is pretty cool. So your controllers don't need to sit on top of um, your, your visuals. Okay. Then, We've got the size, right? So we can make these really big or really small, depending on what you want to see. And I can also adjust their rotation so that they can point in the correct direction. Okay. Then below that, we've got opacity, which we don't need to change. And we've got the anchor, which refers to this black crosshair over here. All right, so again, I can change its color. So if I make it white, for example, there it is. 
um, I can change its size as well. So if I wanted to make it really large like that um, or very small, then I, I have like complete control over here. And the more time we spend setting this all up, the more sort of effort we put in at the planning phase, the easier our animation is gonna be later down the line. Okay, cool. So I'm going to quickly collapse that controller. We can take a look at the arm here. We've got an option for left and right. I've never really found the difference. Maybe I'm just not working on the right projects, but that's something we can ignore for now. All right, and then we have IK hand over here. This one's important. So the very first one, IK here is ticked enabled. All right, if I untick that, if I turn that off, then it is going to mean that my controller does nothing. Okay. Um, this doesn't mean, however, that I can turn it off in order to move my hand um, <clears throat> to where I would like it to be in order to control that arm. Because when I turn the IK back on, you'll see when the stream updates that my hand moves um, as if it had still been controlled. All right. Um, reverse, we don't need to worry about that. Uh, going down, we've got the FK little drop down here. And we can see that we actually have some follow through and overlapping actions that can be enabled. Um, this is very cool. Not something we'll be looking at, but Duik does allow you to really streamline this entire process in the future. Then we have stretch. This is what we want to affect quickly. All right, so currently you'll see that if I pull my controllers too far apart, it pulls all my assets apart. All right, now there's nothing wrong with that. I, I can think of a few ways this could be used as like a cool, um, as like a cool thing. But if we turn that auto stretch off, our arm sort of our assets will be constrained as they are. And regardless of where I pull this controller, it's not going to stretch my limbs apart. Okay. All good so far. We're kind of understanding what's cracking, right? That's all we need. We don't need to worry about advanced data or display. We've essentially set this up exactly the way we need to. All right. So then to give you guys an idea what you're going to do, uh, yeah, I can do it again for sure. Um, what, just the stretching, are you, is that all you need? Um, I meant, uh, I was asking you to move the controller again, but you already did it, so it's fine. Okay, as long as you are sure that you're good, then um, cool, then we're good. Um, let me just turn off auto stretch again. Okay. Cool. So just to give you guys an idea now, this is where making layers shy really comes in handy. So taking a look at this, right, our controller controls pretty much everything. So we don't need these structures because we're not going to need to animate them. So I can lock those and I can make them shy and they can then disappear. So I don't need to worry about that. Let me just unshy everything else so I can show you. Okay, so I have now gotten rid of those structures. We don't need those. The pinky tips, pinky bases, all the way down to the hand. So that's layer six down to 14. Those we would need to animate, right? But we don't need to worry about them right now. So I could make them shy as well. The forearm and upper arm, I am not going to be animating at all. So I can lock those and I can hide those. So even though we have a lot of layers on screen, we're not actually going to be working with most of them. All right, um, and then Duix also got a very nice quick little thing if we dive back into the create structure um, tab, which is the little Meccano arm. My mouse is hovering over it now. So if I go there and I go down to the second option, second last option rather, it says show hide, right? And if I click on that, it's automatically gonna show or hide my skeleton for me. All right, so again, the stream, there we go. So you can see that it's, showing and disappearing. All right, so a nice quick little button so we don't have to worry about seeing that skeleton all the time. Okay, are we all good? Are we ready for me to scare the shit out of you with like a file example before I let you go? Maybe, hopefully. I'll turn my camera on for this, spook me. Okay, let's do it. So, this is obviously like a very simple arm. You, you know no fear. All right, we'll see. We'll see what happens next. Um, so we've got this arm. What you guys will be doing for homework, just to quickly remind you for that, 
is um, for your O snap animation, you're going to animate recreating this using the rotation, the forward kinematics values, right? You're then going to rig your arm using Duik, and we're going to be doing that exercise next week. You'll be recreating that snap, but with Duik rather, all right? Um, and then I'm going to walk you through the rigging process for our main character. And let me show you what that looks like. Now, we're not going to be working with something this intense, thankfully, but just to give you a general idea of what it's like working with a character, let's quickly bring in my cool cucumber. Uh, where are you, cool cucumber? Here we go. Bring that in as composition retain layer size and go into that. Okay, so already we've got a lot of layers over here. All right. So initial, like immediately what I do when working with character animation um, is I move my timeline to a vertical position. All right. And then I try and minimize the amount of space that I need on screen so that I can still work with this. All right. At the end of the day, all I want is enough space to work with the sheer number of layers that I'll be doing. And then I can work with this as well. Okay. So let me set all of these as a color. Now, obviously I would color code all of these correctly but I'm going to go and lock those. Okay. Now, using Dirk, if I go and click on hominid, it's going to generate an entire human skeleton for me. All right. We are now, what layers, how many layers do we have? We've got 53 layers so far. Okay. So that's pretty cool. This is then where we would go and automate that. So let's hide all of that. Let's select our skeleton here. I'm going to auto rig that. That's going to give us a lot more controllers as well. Um, so now we are up to, let me just quickly minimize one of these. We're up to 66 layers. All right. Cool. Hopefully you are a little impressed, but the dope thing is about this is now it's all sorted. And again, as I've said, a lot of this, we are not going to need to work with. All right. So all the controllers, sure. Uh, we'll keep those on screen. All of my structures I can get rid of. So if I quickly select here, everything with the word S, I can make shy and I can lock those and I can turn on shy. All right. Taking a look at these assets here, let's pretend I wasn't working with any of these. So again, I can just make all of these layers shy and then I'm only working with my controllers. Okay. Cool. Now let me show you something really dope. Hopefully the stream is going to work for us. All right. So if I make this a full screen quickly and we take a look here, we have all these controllers for our bones. All right. We've got a neck controller here, which allows us to move the top of our body. Notice how it's curving into the spine there for us. Uh, we've got our hips, which allow us to twerk it up if we need to. So I can move this into whatever position I would like. Um, I would use my hand controllers to move my arms wherever they needed to go. I've got my spine over here, which refers to that. I quickly undo all this. Um, and then I have my feet, which I can use to move here. And I can actually apply like ro rolls to the foot. Uh, Megan, do a backflip. Unfortunately, I'm not going to do that today, um, but one day for sure. I mean, what? And I, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a little sneaky that I can pull on you maybe. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let me do this. Uh, dun, dun. Let's bring in my cool cucumber here. Why are you not visible? Show me my work. Uh, comp three, cool cucumber. Okay, uh, my After Effects is deciding that now is the time to break. So you guys can actually just quickly follow along on the stream. I'm going to empty my disk cache. And if you're finding that your machines are really struggling, this might be something you need to do. Um, so if you're on Windows, if you click on, uh, if, if you're on Windows, you're going to go to Edit, right? So Edit, and you'll find Preferences down here somewhere at the bottom. On a Mac, it's clicking on the word After Effects, going to Preferences. And we are going to go to Media and Disk Cache. All right, median disk cache. And once you click on that, it's going to open up your folder here. Now, I don't know if I've explained this before, but essentially what your disk cache is, is a temporary file folder for After Effects. So every time you hit spacebar to render something to see what it's doing, that information needs to be stored somewhere so that After Effects can sort of refer back to it. 
Um, and we just need to empty that information every now and then because it does build up. So you'll see I've set 100 gigs aside for my disk cache. And when I say empty, it will tell me how many gigs are currently in my cache. So I'm just about full. So that's 99 and a half gigs. I'm going to say OK. And it's going to wipe all that unnecessary information for me. All right. Um, and that'll make my machine run a lot faster. So I can say OK after that. And I'm just going to reset my workspace so that it's actually working um, like so. Okay, this is my timeline. Why is nothing showing? Mm. There we go. Okay, so what I want to show you uh, as well quickly, which is really fucking cool, is if I select like all my controllers and I quickly dive back into Duik, um, just to show you like an idea behind the automation process that we have uh, that you guys can always use in the future, but, uh, but not now. Uh, so if I go into automation, I can actually turn on a walk cycle, dude, like, boom, my character is automatically now going to walk for me, which is fucking amazing. Uh, and then I've got a lot of options for this, which is fantastic. So just to give you like an idea, I've got my walk cycle over here. Um, I can adjust my offset, but my main parameters here, I can actually change a lot of the information about my character. So let's say I wanted him to be me. So I'm, I'm 203 centimeters tall. I weigh 90 kilograms. Um, I've got 10% energy and I'm in a chilled mood. All right, my walking speed, um, I'm going to walk slightly faster. So let's make that about negative 4.5. And currently it's set to realistic. So I'm going to walk as though I have somewhere to go. But if I set that to dancing, I've got like a nice little bop in my hips. Like uh, you'll see in the video when you watch, unfortunately the stream's not going to capture it, but I've got like a pretty dope little bop in the hips, which is quite nice. Um, I've got secondary options so I can adjust my head. How much swing do I want on my neck? Um, so let's, let's really push that. There we go. You guys can see that. So now I've got a floppy penis for a head. Um, my body, let's check that swing as well. So, I mean, this is really cool. I, I really hope you guys can like understand how dope this is. Um, and the reason why, again, I'm an old man and I enjoy doing this for every class. So if I take a look at all my layers quickly, right? The reason why I, I'm so anal with you guys about labeling your layers and then getting correct parenting is because when I started with Duik, it was fresh. It was um, sort of like just being released. The interface was not user-friendly at all. And when you generated your structures and your controllers, you had to parent everything yourselves. So I would have to go and grab, um, let's take a look at this quickly. So I've got two hand controllers. I've got two feet controllers. Um, and I would then need to go and make sure that my structures were parented to the correct controller. So I don't accidentally have like my left controller moving my right leg, foot. Um, and then I would need to go and parent all of my Illustrator files to the correct things as well. All right. So yeah, I did it the OG way. God, you young whippersnappers don't know how easy you, you have it. Um, but yeah, just like, hopefully you're quite excited. When I, when I was introduced to Duik, and I was introduced to Duik in 2014, that's when I knew that, um, yeah, ancient times, dude, you're all fucking man. Um, yeah, back in the day, 2014, when I saw this, I fucking knew that character animation was something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I can only say it's gotten even cooler, which is pretty damn dope. All right. <laughs> I can't take this guy seriously. So much fun. Um, anyway, that's it for today. All right. So yeah, very fast. The other classes took a lot more time. Um, if I quickly dive over to your classroom, just to make sure there aren't any questions with regards to homework. Where am I? Yeah, let me just go into classroom quickly. Um, you guys should have seen that email that I sent about like Discord or the, the notification on Classroom. So that's just been set up to let you guys know that that's there for us if we want. Um, if you want sort of like faster feedback maybe or more personalized feedback. Um, so taking a look at the Classroom, if we take a look at our classwork for next week, um, what you're going to be doing is practicing your FK. All right, so you're gonna use the OSNAP file and you're going to finish the animation that we did today in class. 
All right. Uh, this vid will be uploaded as soon as I've downloaded it and re-uploaded it to Classroom. So don't stress it, it'll be up before the end of, uh, like before tonight, hopefully. Um, all right, so you're gonna do that. Then you are going to practice your inverse kinematic skills by rigging the arm using doing. And we're gonna get ready for the animation for that next week, okay? Um, and then what I also want you to do is I want you guys to find your quotes um, for uh, the, the facial animation. So find your song uh, line, find your sentence, find whatever it is that you wanna say, lock it in for next week. You don't have to post it anywhere. You can just tell me next week what it is. And then I'm going to assign emotions according to that. All right. You'll see that I've given you the installing Duik. I've also given you two tutorials here. Um, the longer one covers everything in detail, right? Including a different method that we're going to look at next week. That's where we generate bones for a single flat layer. All right. Um, it is covered in this video as well, but for whatever reason, like, when I rendered it zoomed in. So you can't see what my what my mouse is doing most of the time. So you can watch it if you want. It's not necessary. We'll be doing that next week. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Are there any questions or anything like that that I can help out with? We all okay. We all excited doing something cool rather than just a ball moving across the screen. Oh, good. Fantastic. If you guys have any questions, drop me an email for a contact session. Um, we can do those. Um, otherwise, yeah, free to bounce. Enjoy the rest of your day and have a great week. Further. Um, the filters I got from, wait, let me just check, uh, Snap Camera. Okay, okay. okay. Just John. Um, okay, cool. So also just a question on those is, are you on your phone or is this like a thing for your laptop? No, it's for the laptop. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I can quickly check if I can send the link. Cool. Cheers, Angela. I'm glad that you found it somewhat interesting. Check you next week. Cheers, Jacques. Stay well. Uh, yeah, Ivan, if you can like post the link in chat, that would be pretty dope. I'll quickly do it. Okay, just, yeah, okay. there it is. Cool, thank you very much. No problem, should have a great day, bye. Yeah, you as well. Ciao, <laughs> cheers. <laughs>